Hello, church family. This is Susie McCoy coming to you again for another moment of hope. During this time, my Sunday school class has been studying the minor prophets. Of course, they're called the minor prophets not because they're of less importance or that their message is of less importance, but because they have short books. So there's only a few chapters. In some cases, maybe one chapter or three chapters. But what has struck me during this time of study is how often the things that the prophets are speaking about apply to us today. And even in the midst of the pandemic and the, the unrest and things, it seems that there is a great parallel in many times when we're studying. The thing about Joel is he's talking about an invasion of locusts. And I don't know if you ever thought about locust invading or how it works, but they come in a great um, a number and a great, they swarm and then they come through in waves and they, the first the old ones eat, then another group comes and eats and then they lay eggs and those hatch and the, those crawl across the ground and eat um, other things that were left to where there's nothing left anymore at all of the field and the trees that have been completely devoured by the locusts. And Joel has some very expressive language uh, where he is talking about this great invasion. So I want to read a little bit uh, of his language where he's describing what's going on. And then I want to talk about what he asked the nation of Israel to do in this time of calamity. See if any of these things sound interesting to you. Chapter 1, verse 2. Hear this, you elders. Listen, all who live in the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days or in the days of your forefathers? Tell it to your children and let your children tell it to their children and their children to the next generation. So I read that and wondered, will we say the same of 2020? Has anything like this ever happened in our days? And will we tell it to the next generation and the next? Perhaps. And then he says, a nation has invaded my land. This is verse six, powerful and without number. It has the teeth of a lion and the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. The grain offerings and the drink offerings are cut off from the house of the Lord. So he's describing what seems like an invasion. I wonder if the virus seems like an invasion coming in waves and waves. Has it laid waste to our lives and uprooted us and changed things that we didn't expect it to change? It has brought sorrow. It has separated us physically from one another. And it's a time of great stress. So in this great time uh, in the Old Testament after the invasion of locusts, what is Joel asking Israel to do? He's asking them to call themselves to repentance and turn to the Lord. And, and twice he uses the same language. But the first time is in chapter 1, verse 14. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord, your God, and cry out to the Lord. So he's asking the people to focus on the Lord. Declare a fast. Make the Lord the most important thing that you're focusing on to call people together, both the leaders and everyone in the land, and to worship and cry out to the Lord for assistance and repentance. Then in chapter 2, verse 12, the Lord says, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with your all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. And Joel continues, Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. He is abounding in love and relents from sending calamity. Turn to the Lord because he's there and he's always there for us. So in this time, I wonder if our response is to go to the Lord, go to the Lord in prayer, Ask him to heal our land. Ask him to take away the virus. 
Ask him that we may focus our lives on him. And then later, we have the Lord's answer in Joel. The Lord will reply to them, says verse 19. I am sending you grain, new wine and oil, enough to satisfy you fully. There's a promise from the Lord that he will send positive things and enough to fill us fully. And then later it says, surely he has done great things. Be not afraid, O land. So let's not be afraid. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Be not afraid, O wild animals, for the open pastures are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains in righteousness and sends you abundant showers. If we trust in the Lord, this time will pass. And we will see green pastures again like they did after the locusts. And we will rejoice in that time. But we need to remember that in all times, the Lord is with us always. And we can call out to him in prayer and he will be there beside us. Thank you.